Thanks for watching my lesson. Uh, this one's going to be on the second Joe Bonner master solo in his version of Albert King's I'll Play the Blues For You from the Live at the Greek Theatre album. I've already posted the first solo, I've had a few requests to do the second one. It's taken a while, it's probably the hardest solo I've had to do so far in these lessons. So, um, hope you enjoy it, come in for a close up and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Thanks. So this is the second solo from uh, Joe Bonamassa's version of I'll Play the Blues For You, as I've just said. The um, chords behind this solo are different from the first solo. So I did a very basic uh, backing track as a separate video for my lesson on the first solo. You wouldn't be able to use that one to practice, so I'm going to post a new one after I've posted this that represent the chords for this solo. So essentially the song it sticks to a certain chord structure for the first verse and the first solo and then for the rest of the vocal verses the chorus kind of repeats at the end so the structure changes for those ones and then for the second batch of uh, solos where you've got Joe Bonamassa's second one which we're gonna, gonna do now and then you've got the keyboard solo and then you've got Kurt Fletcher's solo that's a different, a third chord progression and that's the one I'm gonna show you now quickly and the one I'll be doing a backing track for. So essentially I think it's uh, 16 bars. So it starts off the same. We've got four bars of uh, G minor, because this is a G minor blues. So. And then two bars of C minor, or, or C minor seven if you like. Two more bars of the G minor. Then we go to one bar of B flat, one bar of D7, one bar of C minor again, and this is where it changes from the other two progressions in the song. We go back to the D7 one bar and then back to the C minor for the two bars and then we finish with two bars of G minor. And like I said there'll be a backing track with that chord progression for you to practice. So essentially this is going to be G minor pentatonic uh, G natural minor uh, pretty much entirely I think. It's got a couple of really quick runs which are very hard to play up to speed and hence me taking my time before putting this lesson out there because it took me quite a few takes to get a decent enough version to put on that intro and it's still obviously nowhere near as good as uh, Mr Bonamassa's would be but hopefully it's gonna uh, at least teach you the correct notes. So without further ado let's give it a go. So if you've learned the first solo, then the beginning of this one is very similar. Here we go. So. so we're starting off the same way as the first solo. I'm going to stop referencing the first solo after this bit, but uh, it's kind of relevant here because we're sliding up to the 12th fret on the... Uh, D string, then playing 12 on the G, back to 12 on the uh, D. So slide up from around the fifth fret, don't, you don't have to be too particular. And then roll your finger, play the 12 on the G, back to 12 on the D. We don't want them sounding together. Ideally, we want them separate. Then we go straight into this big tone and a half bend. So 15th fret on the B string. And we want to, if you imagine this is our first position. G minor, we want to bend this 15 up to that pitch there. So. So 
So make sure you're supporting that bend with your other two fingers. And we're doing that three times. We're bending up three times and then on the third one we're using some vibrato. Um, so after we've done the three big bends and we're doing a bit of vibrato on that third one, we kind of sound a very slight part of the release and then just tail off. We're not, we're not going to slide all the way down, but we're going to just kind of like that. We're then going to move into this next lick, which is So this is all based around the fourth position and we're going to start off with a half step bend and release on the 13th fret, pull off to the 11 and then play 13 again, then play 11 and 13 again and then bend that up again without picking again on the 13 and this time we're going to bend up a step. So after we bent up that step, we're not going to sound a release tight this time and we're going to play 11, 13 again. So all together so far. And then going to play 12 on the G string with lots of vibrato. So. So all together so far. And to finish out a little sequence, we're going to go. So we're on the 12th fret of the G string, and we're then going to pick it again. We're then going to pick 11 and 13 again on the B string. We're going to bend that 13 up without picking it again. I'm going to play 11 13 again, so and then 12 and 11 again, then 13 on the high E string, vibrato, and then play 10 on the high E string and slide down. So that whole sequence then. I'm going to move into this next lick, which is so that's quite a lot to take in. So, what we're doing there, we're going to start off with bending up the 18th fret on the B string one step and then very quickly playing 15, 17 on the E string. We're then going to pick again and bend that 17 up half a step. So. We're then going to pick it twice while we're holding it on that half bend. And after the second pick, we're going to sound the release. So. And then play the 15 vibrato. And then 18, 15, 18 on the B string. And then 15, 18 on the E string. And then pick again and bend up one step. And then we're going to bend three more times. So we're going to bend up um, the first one, the second one, and then a third and a fourth one, and they're going to be much closer together. So. And then we're going to 
play the 18 unbent with some vibrato. So putting that together so far we've got and then to finish out a little bit we're going to play 15 on the E, 15 on the B try and let them sound individually and then we're going to bend up 18 on the B twice, one step and on the second one vibrato and then sound a release and pull off to the 15 And then after we've pulled off to the 15, bend the 18 on the B string again. And that's that little sequence. And then we've got one of the really tricky licks. So let's recap where we are so far. First of all, I'll do that sequence again and then I'll play from the beginning. So. From the start, we would have. Oh, so from the start, we'd have. And now, what was my nemesis for quite a while when I was trying to do that intro video, we've got this, uh, which I'll try not to mess up. Followed by this. So it doesn't seem too hard to doing it there, but your problem is, is when you're playing uh, well, fourths effectively, or two two notes on the same fret but different strings, and you don't really want to have them sounding at the same time, as I've mentioned before. And to not do that when this one is really hard, um, I struggled with it. But essentially what we want is, um, so after we've come off of this, we're then gonna be doing, so that's 15 on the E and then 15 on the B. 18 on the B and then 17 on the um, uh, G. So we're basically coming down the G minor pentatonic position one shape. And then 15 on the B, 15 on the G. So. And then 17 on the G, 17 on the D. And then finish with 15 on the G. So it's up to you, you can either bar across each time you're doing that, or you can try and separate it a bit more. So really you've just got to get a metronome and, and, and keep practicing it until you get faster and it's just all about the coordination between the two hands. Um, and Joe bon Bonamass is obviously brilliant at that sort of thing. Unfortunately I'm not, so. You could um, you could use your little finger on that eighteenth fret of the B string if you're comfortable with that. But essentially, that's it. So, then we come into the next one, which is possibly even harder, um, which starts off like this. Um, so that's fifteen, seventeen on the A string. 17 on the D and then 17 again on the A. 15 on the G and then 15 on the D. 17 on the G and then 17 on the D. 15 on the B and then 15 on the G. And 
18 on the B and then 17 on the um, G. Then we're going to change the pattern slightly and we're going to be going up in pitch, so 15 on the B and then 15 on the E. And then bend and release half a step on the 17 of the E. So after you've done that, bend and release half a step on the 17. And then I'm going to play 15 on the E and then we're going to bend 18 up one step. Don't sound the release and then play it again. 18. So that second rundown then is... Next lick is going to be so uh, we're going to bend up the 20 twice, one step. Not going to sound the releases, and then we're going to play it a third time unbent. So So twice, again, and then I'm going to play 18 on the E and then 20 again, and then bend it. So I've noticed Joe Bonamassa does that quite a lot, so he's playing the note and then bending it, uh, just like a 16th note afterwards. It's almost like it's just a grace note before he bends it, but he's not bending it instantly, so it's not... It's anyway, uh, I digress. So basically, we've got sorry, so bend that up a step again. Play 18, 20 again, and this time finish with 20 on the B. So that last little lick then is. And then finish with 18 and 20 again on the uh, E, and bend up twice, one step, and you're sounding a part of the release in between those two, and then just come off and slide down. at the end um, I'm pretty sure he before he gets to this bit which is basically we're going to bend up the um, 20 on the E string five times but I think before he does that he's um, he's picking so he's come off of this thing he's come down and then he's picking somewhere around the third on the low E and sliding all the way up before he does those five bends uh, I didn't do that in the introduction. Uh, that's essentially what he's doing. I'm not going to dwell on that too much now. Um, but if we're going from this bit, we then come up, back up and we're going to go... So that's five one-step bends on the 20th fret, where you're sounding a bit of the release, but not the entirety of it already. So we're not going... But we are hearing a little bit. And then after we've done that five times, we're going to pick 18. And then pick 
20, vibrato, and then to finish off this last little bit up here we're going to be going, so we've just done five bends. We're then going to play 18, 20 again. Do that little bend up after we've held it for a second unbent. Uh, so that's what you want. We're then going to play 18 again, and then we're going to play 20, but we're going to bend straight away this time. So. Then we're going to play 18 on the E again, 20 on the B this time, 18 on the E, and a little micro bend on the 18. So, all together from the five bends, we've got and after that, a little micro bend on the 18. We're going to go 20 on the B, 19 on the G, back to 20 on the B. So. And then to finish off the whole of this uh, long, tricky solo, we're going to be doing this. So that is going to be um, 15, 18 on the B, 15 on the E, 18, 15 on the B, 17 on the G, 18, 15 on the B, 17 on the G, twice. So all together so far. We then want 15 on the G, 17 on the D. Back to 15 on the G. So. Seventeen and then fifteen on the D. Seventeen on the A, fifteen on the A, half bend and release, eighteen on the E, and then our very last note is back to the G note, which is fifteen on the E, slide down. So that little run down very slowly. That's it. That's a solo. Um, lots to it. Lots of tricky runs. Um, I say this at the end of most of my videos, but it's quite feasible. I've, I've pulled it up. Hopefully not. Any questions, let me know. Let's play through it as slow as I can without, um, without getting it wrong. So, from the beginning. <laughs>
And that's it. Enjoy. Have fun. Back in track to follow. See you for the next one. Bye.